What's up everyone and welcome to another Warframe video. We've got another frame to update now the dust has settled from the recent mainline changes and that's one I've been finding a huge amount of fun and I showed off in my mastery test and that is Ash Prime. Previously in my Ash video for a proper high level stuff I went with Trickery Smoke Bomb Build to try and take advantage of not being seen as my survivability. Since he really wasn't tanky enough to take much of a hit when you took him to really high level stuff. Much like Banshee though that we looked at the other day, one big change came in the main line that hugely switched his high level style of play. And that is obviously going to be the change and huge buff to Arcane Ultimatum. And we're going to be basing our build around that. So let's take a quick look at that build before we launch into the playstyle and how to get the most out of it. The build I'm showing is one that doesn't actually need an Umbral Former. All of this build can be achieved without it. I do have a very slightly different version that does require the Umbral Former, and I will show that afterwards and just quickly show the main differences between the two. So this build, Aura, Steel Charge, mostly for capacity. Since I use a lot of melee with him as well, he benefits from melee amazingly well, so it just makes sense to use it from that point of view as well. In my X list right now, your enemy sense for the radar once my companion inevitably dies. Handspring is another amazing mod to use here because of that knockdown recovery. Gives some real nice quality of life against the knockdown spam some missions become. Then we've got a triple umbral setup, each one buffing the other. They're all useful here, none of them on here purely for boosting, they all have a role. Increasing base armor to work with ultimatum gives us 1,700-ish armor with ultimatum active. And that's very easy to trigger. Intensify is going to boost our Fatal Teleport and Bladestorm and Vitality for health. Adaptation is going to build up uh, the resistances to the damage types the enemies are firing at you. Boost your survivability by a fair amount. Finishing our survivability is going to be Gladiator Resolve. But this is also going to give us the extra health and the increase to our melee with the mini Blood Rush the, set bit, the, the actual set bonus brings to the table especially if you're like me, and combine this with melee more often than not. Fatal Teleports on here is to boost the finisher uh, from the teleport, as well as just auto-doing the finisher, which is really nice. It's quite a really good bit of quality of life. Rage is going to keep us fully stocked on energy, especially when you combine it with a maxed out fleeting to keep the cost of the abilities down, especially Bladestorm. That one can get very expensive very quickly if you've got no efficiency. So you can keep that down a bit. Then Arcanes. Obviously Arcane Ultimatum is going to keep our armor up on finisher. Lovely 1200 additive armor. The second Arcane is mostly personal preference. I have Arcane Strike on here for more melee attack speed. And that is definitely what I would recommend. Since it also speeds up the animations of your teleport finisher. As well as Blade Storm. But you could run Guardian for more armor if you wanted to, or just about any other arcane you want. There's no crazy energy requirements like with Banshee the other day, so there's no enforced second arcane like with her. So play around with that second slot and change it to however you want. But Arcane Strike is definitely what I would recommend for this one. Just to quickly pop the Umbral build up on screen for a second just to show the difference between this build and it. Prime sure-footed in the Exilus so we never ever get knocked down and we can use self-damage weapons or self-knockback weapons, self-stagger weapons as easily, um, well just at ease if we wanted to, we don't have to worry about that whatsoever, never get staggered. Hunter Adrenaline for that extra 5% energy from damage, um, they're really the only difference between the two builds so as you can see you don't lose that much effectiveness if you don't have that Umbral uh, Former to use on Ash. Especially when our Nightwave intermissions really are in need of an intermission so we can get another one. But obviously the build is only a small part of the story. It's more about the playstyle, how you combine things that will make it really effective. The main thing with this build is keeping your ultimatum up. I know that sounds ridiculously easy, but at high level, just not having it means death. And it is super easily just to phase out, forget to do it, and bam, you're dead. When playing, there's a couple of things you can do to proc it. You can either trigger it using clones from your Bladestorm, since unlike Trickery, Ultimatum only requires a finisher, not a finisher kill. So you can cast your Bladestorm, send out a clone, and that finisher 
means it will proc ultimatum. Meaning you can either send out a clone for a quick refresh, or if you're using Bladestorm as part of your room clear, you're going to be keeping ultimatum up pretty much constantly. Personally, I'm not a fan of Bladestorm, especially when it gets to the marking multiple times part, mostly because it's a ridiculously dumb mechanic that needs to be removed and just replaced with three marking on a single mouse over, in all honesty. What you can do instead though is use the finishes from your Fatal Teleport to trigger it. Obviously, this is by far the easiest way to trigger it and like Banshee, you can work the finisher into the way that you play Ash. For example, the way I do it is that any high threat unit Bombards, Gunners, Ancients, Techs, that sort of thing, I will finish them. With the rate that the game sends them at you, you will almost always have your ultimatum up, while also instantly removing these high threat units from a distance, making it an incredibly effective way of clearing them up from the field and just keeping your survivability up. Not only that, but Teleport is an incredible gap closer. Cast Teleport, do the finisher, and then demolish the group around the enemy. So if you're using Teleport as the gap closer as well as for the finisher, you're never going to have a problem keeping Arcane Ultimatum procced. One nice little thing to note about finishes is that Parazon finishes do count towards keeping Ultimatum up, so that means that if you regularly deal with your thralls in Lich missions, you're going to have your defense up literally all the time, so you don't have to worry about your abilities too much. Weapons are something that you can obviously pair with Dash to increase his effectiveness, and while yes, this build more than Banshee can be used with literally any weapon, Obviously, due to his passive, which is that slash procs do 25% more damage and last for 50% longer, slash weapons are going to work the best, especially with the new improved viral slash meta that we're in right now. My melee of choice is the Nikana Prime, which I will have a video on in the next week or so, but it absolutely demolishes literally everything in the game with no problems whatsoever. Might be the strongest melee out there right now, not just because his damage is quite literally off the scale, but because if you pair that with the Amalgam Daiku mod, you have a full heal on literally every single swing, giving you some absolutely amazing sustained tank at high level. Not only this, but since finishers also benefit from mods on the melee, for example Blood Rush, your teleport benefits from these mods on your melee, and Bladestorm benefits directly from the combo counter itself as part of the ability, which is why I heavily favour the melee style while playing him. This build is, I mean, is absolutely amazing though. It's nice to be able to play Ash as an offensive ninja, face tanking enemies, not worrying about having to hide with his smoke bomb, and his passive works in this meta absolutely perfectly. He's gone from a frame where I thought it was kind of bleh, especially at high levels, to one that I have an absolute blast playing. To the extent where the Umbral Former that I was saving, it immediately went on him. It's nice that some frames that weren't amazing before are really starting to shine with some quality of life changes. Let me know if you think there's a frame I should check out with these changes that came in the mainline, and I'll take a look and see if I can figure out a build. But for now, thank you for being patient with me. I've had some health stuff going on recently, plus my PC exploded, pretty much. Um, so videos have been slower than I wanted to actually coming out. But for now, thank you all so much for watching. Smash that like button if you enjoyed. Hit that sub button for more Warframe content, and I shall catch you in the next video.